G'day folks and welcome to Cairns on the far north coast of Queensland. You know, 30 years ago it was a sleepy little sugarcane port, but today it's a thriving tourist city that attracts people from all over the world. There are many reasons why so many people travel to Cairns. For starters, the area offers beautiful scenery, warm weather and friendly people. But without a doubt, one of Cairns' biggest attractions is fishing. And one particular style of fishing stands out from all the rest. Each year from mid-September until late December, more giant black marlin gather along this stretch of coast than anywhere else on Earth. And anglers come from far corners of the globe to do battle with these great fish. Since the late 1960s, a highly sophisticated charter boat industry has developed here. It caters for the needs of these visiting game fishermen. One of the best known vessels in today's fleet is Kanahoe a beautiful 13-metre woodnut game cruiser built right here in far north Queensland. Kanahoe and her luxurious mothership, the 33-metre Moustique, enjoy an enviable record for producing big marlin. So I was really looking forward to joining her skipper, Brian Felton, and his two deckies, Snudge and Matty, for some serious fishing. That's what it is about a game bait, you know, it's all teamwork. And while we've got a magnificent tide this afternoon on the Great Barrier Reef, you fill in your morning by going light game fishing or sport fishing. Fishing for bait fish like scad, which are caught on the old daisy chain rig, or fishing for other species like small tuna or mackerels that abound in this magnificent paradise up here. Now, Snudge, you're on national television, son. You're five foot three in your thongs. You're going to declare what this is, son. Ah, uh, a little mackerel. You just saw him <laughs> like I did. Isn't that good, eh? How good? A nice little, little mackerel. mackerel. I tell you what, this, nice this is a nice <laughs> mackerel. Don't worry about a little mackerel, mate. A little mackerel. So this is a nice. Manuel Labor. Is it's a Spaniard? Is it? Spanish mackerel. Yes. Yeah. Spanish mackerel. Well, isn't that lovely? We've caught these before on the Gold Coast uh, and also up at Melville Island, but that is a very, nice, very man. nice fish, isn't it? Let's put his head up here. Come now, on, you know mate. you're under pressure here yeah, because every decky in the world is going to be very watching you pressure. now. And you've got it first off, mate. There you go. How about that? Now, that is a nice Just Spanish mackerel. Give him a can of holly kiss. Yeah. And that's the end of him. One more. And that's a humane way of putting the fish out of its misery because these are magnificent in the in the uh, kitchen, aren't they? Oh, beautiful eating. Yeah. Beautiful eating fish. Snudge, can you tell us a little bit about the feeding habits of the Spanish mackerel and why they're such a much sought after adversary? Well, they feed a lot on those banana fish which we see in back there. And uh, have a go at the teeth. Yeah. So they are a real feeding machine, oh, so. Yes. We have not only a gang hook for protection, but also a little length of wire to stop him chopping through the mono. Chopping through the mono, yeah, you've got very, very sharp teeth. Yeah, and and a true game fish with the flukes on the back here of the uh, yes. of the tail. Yes, beautiful eating fish. <laughs> so that's what it's all about, eh, folks? A bit of fishing fun, and apparently some of the best uh, eating fish in the sea. What more could you want? Another day in the office, 28 degrees, flat seas. Oh, what a job! <laughs> So how long you been at this game, Snudge, the old deckhand, son? Well, I got up here in 71, all the way from Sydney. And you didn't go home? No way. <laughs> what attracts you to the reef and keeps you here every year, mate? Oh, the fishing. Is it? Yep. The best black marlin fishing in the world, they say? Without a doubt. Without a doubt? Without a doubt. Isn't that amazing? And what's the biggest you've ever been associated with? Uh, 1320. Is that a fact? That's a big, big fish. 
So where did the nickname Snudge come from? Uh, that's a long story, mate. Well, we've got a long, long yeah, tape on here, well, mate. Well, it might be another day. <laughs> another day. <laughs> do you like this bottom bouncing, do you? Or you like to get into the, like, you know, cut out the uh, preliminaries and get to the main event? You, have you got marlinitis? No, nah, I like all fishing, mate. Do you? Yep. And it's a lifestyle more than a... Retire as a millionaire job, is it? <laughs> yes. <you're, laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> now, what we've got down here is I haven't got a clue fish, which is very, very common around these parts, the old I haven't got a clue fish. And why I do that with the rod is that this rod is designed to catch two, three, maybe four kilo fish. It's a three to four kilo outfit, little Rex Hunt outfit. So what I do is I make it into a little short stroker by just giving it a little bit of a hand below the bottom runner there. And therefore I put a bit of pressure, pressure on this fish, which I have to, because these fish up these parts live on the coral reef, around the atolls and the Ks. And what they do is they try and run back in and cut your line because they realise that something's amiss. Now we've got a bit of colour here now. And it's a dark sort of a fish. What sort of a fish is it, Snudgy? Oh, a little shark, isn't a it? A little shark. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that magnificent? Is this a little whaler? Yeah, a little whaler. Well, I've only got 50 pound monofilament, so mm. I'm in <laughs> with a bit of a show of getting done. But if I don't get done, these little sharks are terrific fun. I'm very, very pleased on this little outfit, actually. I thought mm. I'd be oh. cleaned up, and I have now. So he bit through. And there it is there. Thank you, Mother, for the rabbits. That's 50-pound monofilament by two that has been bitten through just like a razor blade. And apparently there are just thousands upon thousands, almost millions of these predators on the reef. And they're the garbage disposal. And just let me say that nature can take care of its own pollution in relation to fish guts and that sort of thing. But these fish can't eat plastic bags. And we've really got to watch that because when someone comes to me at Melbourne and says, I've been down the Port Melbourne Pier and I've seen this plastic bag floating, I can't say it didn't come from an angler, particularly when it's got Western Australian pilchards or uh, Sam's fresh bait on the side. We've got to do the right thing and we'll hand this over in mint condition. Now, what I've got on here, folks, I think is a barracuda, which has snaffled a bib lure, which was getting down a bit. And believe it or not, <laughs> what a coincidence. This is a Rex Hunt bait caster, mate. I reckon I might have a barracuda by the feel of this. And I don't know whether I've got him or he's got me, but uh, he's a little bit upset. <laughs> this is a great workout for these little outfits. And I was never ever gonna put my name on them unless they were any good. But I can tell you now, if we wanted to work out on the barrier reef at North Queensland, we've certainly got that because with 12 pound line, we've got a 20 or a 25 pound fish on the end of this. So this is gonna give this little outfit a real humdinger of a workout. And he's gone down. He has gone down, right down. He's got a lure in his lip, and here he is now. He's quite a big fish. Looks like it could even be perhaps a mackerel. I don't know. He might be a bit too silver for a barracuda, but perhaps he's not doing enough for a mackerel. Snudge, make a decision, son. Uh, make a decision, I don't know. Barracuda. Ah, decisions. Have a look at this. Barracuda. Barracuda. Serious, well, there you are. Barracuda, here he comes. Barracuda. Not a bad one. Now that's actually not bad on a little 12 pound outfit, that's is it, eh? Not bad at all. <laughs> Pretty good, Rex. Ah, oh, gee whiz. There you are. How about that? Barracuda, he wants to wrestle you, Snudge. Yes, he's got very sharp teeth. Very sharp fangs. Oh, there you are. Well, that's not a bad little bit of a workout for 
a little bait casting outfit. Have a look at that. Just weighs a few ounces. Got 12 pound line on it. It's got the name Rex Hunt on it. Hey? Eh? I wonder when the Snud series of rods coming out, son. Ah, uh, shortly. <laughs> shortly. Good fun listening today, folks. One of the biggest thrills of this trip for me was the chance to swim and snorkel on the Great Barrier Reef and to see its multi-coloured inhabitants up close and on their own terms. For someone more used to looking down into the fish's watery world from above, it was a truly unique experience and one that I simply couldn't get enough of. The amount of life and the shapes and colours of the fantastic coral formations took my breath away. Our reef is without doubt one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and I reckon every Australian should make the effort to visit it at least once in their lifetime. Several reputable tour companies run excellent day trips from Cairns or Port Douglas out to the reef. One of the best known of these operations is Quicksilver, which operates several giant wave-piercing catamarans. These will transport you to floating pontoons on the outer reef in speed and comfort. Once there, you can snorkel or scuba dive in safety, and introductory lessons are available for those who've never tried these terrific underwater sports before. But if actually getting into the water and meeting the fish on their own turf is too adventurous for you, there are underwater observatories and even semi-submersible submarines with wide, clear viewing ports. And Quicksilver has fully trained marine biologists like Phil Laycock on hand to teach you all about the fantastic things you're seeing. Well, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest example of a coral reef system found anywhere in the world. It's around 2,800 separate coral reefs make up the entire reef system and uh, extends around 2,300 kilometres down the east coast of Australia and it covers about 350,000 square kilometres. That makes it about the size of Victoria and Tasmania put together, so by far and away the largest coral reef system anywhere. Uh, about 400 species of corals and 1,600 species of fish and the diversity of life out here is just amazing. Sponges and shellfishes and crustaceans, the diversity is amazing. Thousands of, of these individuals out here as well. And the most amazing thing I think about the Great Barrier Reef is the fact that when man first visited the moon and they asked Neil Armstrong what they could see down here on Earth and the only real sort of geographic characteristic that they could see other than the continents was the fact that they could see the Great Barrier Reef from outer space. And the largest living thing on Earth you can see from outer space. It's just amazing. Amazing place to visit, it really is.